Okay, 57. All right, this block, we have this block M1, uh, half a kilogram is released from rest at the top of this hill, and then it slides down and smashes into block two, which is one kilogram, sitting at the bottom of the ramp, and they say the magic word here. The magic word, boom, elastically. Now, when you see that word, you know that you're in for some algebra. Elastic problems, uh, well, what, what does the word elastic mean? So not only is momentum conserved, because momentum's always conserved in collisions, but if you see the word elastic, that means that something else is conserved. Kinetic energy. And then whenever you have an elastic problem, there's gonna be two unknowns, right? There's gonna be two things you're looking for, so you need two equations. So the two equations come from conservation of momentum, that's one equation, and then the second equation is conservation of kinetic energy, which you don't want to you don't want to use it as written because that would be a nightmare, right? Because kinetic energy, the velocity squared. So anyway, to solve this problem, we first need to figure out. So when block number one goes down the hill, we got to figure out what is its velocity right before collision. What's the velocity of block one? right before it hits M2. So how do we do that? Well look, what type of energy does block one start with? Potential, it goes down the hill, and that gets converted to kinetic. Oh, and my zero point is down here, right? For that calculation, have that be your zero point. Okay, so we're gonna say this. Potential of gravity initial is equal to kinetic final right before the collision, right? Right before the collision. So we got MGH equals one half MV squared. The M's cancel. So velocity is square root two GH. We're finding the velocity of block one right before it hits block two. Okay, and then this H is this one, the 2.5, 2.5 meters. So you do that and we, we get uh, seven meters per second, okay? So, V1 initial, so when the block is right here, I'm gonna call that, so V1 initial, right before collision, is seven meter per second. What's V2 initial? Zero, it's just sitting there. Okay, so then the collision happens, the collision happens, and we, we, this is the most time-consuming part of the whole problem. We, we now need to find the velocity of both blocks after the collision. So we got two unknowns. The two unknowns are V1 final after the collision and V2 final after the collision. Does that make sense? The first question is find the velocity of M1 after collision and velocity of M2 after collision. So if you have two unknowns, how many equations do you need? Two. So here are the two equations. M1 V1 initial plus M2 V2 initial equals M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final. So that's conservation of momentum. That's one equation. What's the second equation? Well, you could go like this. You could go one half M1 V1 initial squared plus one half M2 V2 initial squared. So what, what am I writing out there? That would be conservation of kinetic energy. But dudes, you do not want to do that. Because why? The, the algebra is too much. It's, it'd be, that would take you all, all day and all night. It would be hard. So there's another equation which comes from combining conservation of momentum with conservation of kinetic energy and it's V1 initial plus V1 final equals V2 initial plus V2 final. That's how I memorized it. The book writes it a little different. I, I like to memorize it that way because basically it's like one initial plus one final equals two initial plus two final. It's easier to memorize. Easy. I like easy. All right, so what goes to zero? Before the collision, what's not moving? 
before the collision, M2. He's not moving, so that, that goes away. That goes away. So now we've got to substitute these. So what I did is I said, okay, I took this equation here. So V2 final equals V1 initial plus V1 final. So take that and plug it in here for V2 final. So then that's going to give M1 V1 initial equals M1 V1 final plus M2. This is too hard for a quiz. This would be like a, like a uh, midterm type question. V1 initial plus V1 final. So I substitute it in. Then you've got to distribute M1 V1 initial equals M1 V1 final plus M2 V1 initial plus M2 V1 final. So then do the algebra and V1 final comes out as, I'm just going to show it nice and tidy. V1 initial M1 minus M2 over M1 plus M2. So you plug the numbers in. So V1 initial was 7. M1 minus M2 comes out negative. Negative 0.5. And then M1 plus M2 is 1.5. Now look, our answer comes out negative. Does that make sense that it does? V1 final comes out as negative 2.33. Why does it make sense that the final velocity of block one is negative? Because what, what happens to block one after the collision? It bounces back up the hill, right? It hits, it, it collides and rebounds. So negative just means to the left. Block number one after the collision goes back up the hill. That's why the answer comes out negative. Okay? And then V2 final, so go over here, plug in over here, and you can get V2 final, and that is 4.67. Right? Just plug it in right there. Okay. So any questions with that? Okay. Part B. So can I revert this back? Okay, so we now know after the collision, the velocity of block one is 2.33 meter per second to the left. It goes back up the hill. V2 final is positive 4.67 meter per second. All right, so part B, how high up the track does M1 go after the collision? This is easy for cheesy. Look at right after the collision. After the collision, so M1 is right here, right? What type of energy does M1 have after the collision? Kinetic. And then that kinetic, it goes back up the hill, right? And that kinetic goes into potential, right? So you go, okay, 1 half mv squared equals mgh. The m's cancel. So h is v squared over 2g. We now have his velocity after the collision, 2.33. 2 times 9.8. So we figure out that he went 0 0.277 meter back up the hill. That's how, that's how high, that's what we, we just saw for this h right here how high he went before stopping. Okay, part C. How far away from the bottom of the table does the one kilogram object land given that the table is two meters high? So we're solving for X right here. This is projectile motion, so it's a good review. So part C, let me clean this up. So, projectile motion. So look, block two, M2 goes like this. Goes, boo, flies off like that. Uh, that velocity there is 4.67, but that's an X velocity. By the way, what's the initial Y velocity? Zero. When M2 leaves the table, 
the velocity is perfectly in the x. Um, so you got to do two things. You got to find time in the air. How much time will it spend in the air? You're going to use the y direction for that. So you go y equals one half g t squared plus v y initial t. The initial y velocity is zero. So t is going to be two y over g. So that's going to be two times. Now what's our y value? Negative two because it goes down, right? The height of the table is two. And then g is negative 9.8, so the negatives <coughs> cancel. And the time in the air is 0 0.6389 seconds. So now that we know that, we can solve for x, right? The only x equation is vxt, and vx is the 4.67. x velocity stays constant. Time is 0.6389. So we figure out that it will land uh, 2.99 meters. So we'll just say three meters. It goes three meters. That's part C. And then D, how far away from the bottom of the table does the 0.5 kilogram object land? Okay, so look, M1 goes up the hill. Let me erase this. M1 goes like this. It goes up the hill and back down the hill. Look, how fast will M1 be traveling when it reaches the bottom of the table? 2.33, you can prove it, which I don't have time to do here, but you know, after the collision, it was going 2.33 up the 2.33 meter per second up the hill. When it returns, because there's no friction, it's going to be going 2.33. So to answer part D, look, will time in the air be the same? Yeah. yeah. So all you got to do is change this 4.67 to 2.33, and then that makes the answer 1.5. So the answer to part D is 1.5.